Hi guys, today we're going to talk about the second step in Robert Lifton's eight criteria for thought reform. The second step is mystical manipulation. Now he defines this manipulation as the inevitable next step after milieu control. And you can see that in my other video about step one. It's an extensive personal manipulation that happens. It's initiated from the leaders and it seeks to provoke specific patterns of behavior and emotions in such a way that these will appear to have arisen spontaneously from within the environment. So according to Robert Lifton, the leaders are agents chosen by some type of historical providence or by God or for some higher purpose. Um, for us, it was both. The idea that the pastor is God's chosen vessel and the, we were not to criticize or hurt in any way uh, the pastor or God's anointed as they called it. Uh, also, they used a historical chart to show that our church was prophesied about in scripture or being special messengers uh, of the call out or the come out message that God had a special place uh, for the church of God in world history and that we were unique from all other churches. You notice I'm saying this in such a way that I don't believe it because I no longer believe it. So using this higher purpose um, was a manipulation of the mind, uh, whether it's making America great again or saving the planet from destruction or bringing all churches into the knowledge of a particular truth or sometimes even achieving some type of personal success and improvement as we saw in the last video uh, with executive success programs like Nexium. A person is convinced that there is a higher purpose for which they must sacrifice. And who wants to mess with the higher purposes of Almighty God, right? So Lifton explains what happens in the mind when you're in this type of environment. So a person is asked to accept these manipulations on the basis of trust or faith. The individual then responds to the manipulations through developing a certain psychology, which he calls the psychology of the pawn. Feeling himself, this person is feeling themselves unable to escape from forces that are more powerful than themselves. The person subordinates everything they do and adapts themselves to the higher purpose. And they become too sensitive actually to all kinds of cues and expert at anticipating environmental pressures and skillfully riding these pressures in such a way that all of their psychological energies merge with the, the tide of the group rather than um, disrupt the group. And painfully, they can be painfully against themselves. They don't care. There is an active manipulation in this endless round that happens of self-betrayal. The person becomes sensitive to all kinds of cues and they become expert in, at anticipating any kind of group pressure or pressures of their environment and skillfully riding those pressures in a way that they don't damage the group. And all of their psychological energies merge in with that ride that they, they have and they painfully may work against themselves. This in a sense, requires them to actively participate in the manipulation of others to accomplish the goal of the group. And there's this endless round of betrayal and self-betrayal, which happens. But whatever their response, they have been deprived of the opportunity to exercise their own thinking and capacities or their own self-expression or any kind of independent action. Take, for example, the concept 
that nothing less than complete unity in everything will bring down the power of God because we must show the world that the church is divinely favored. But whatever the response to this manipulation, what essentially happens is that the person has been deprived of the opportunity to exercise his or her own capacities for self-expression and any kind of independent action. Take, for example, the concept that nothing less than complete unity in everything will bring down the power of God and show the world that our church is divinely favored. In response to this, the member will anticipate whether all of their actions are in unity with the other church members for this, this higher goal. And they may take a philosophical position in uniformity with the group, regardless of whether they personally believe this or not, or whether they have even thought it through or not. This may be a self-betrayal of their own beliefs, of their virtues, or even their goals, or a betrayal of logic. However, he or she may feel they must conform to support this higher purpose. They become the pawn in the grand scheme of things and will often even manipulate others into believing this thought comes from them and them alone as a divine or personal revelation. For, for example, they may say, well, God showed me or I've figured out a particular thing. Take, for example, a parent that anticipates that the celebration of Christmas is censured by the group, but struggles with this because they have children. Even while they are weighing this out, they lie to the children that God showed them that the celebration of the holidays is demonic, even though they have not settled this in their mind. They are consumed by the idea of unity and projecting unity. And so what they do is manipulate their children into thinking that this is a divine revelation from God to them. Or they may tell the children that at the very least, this has to be done for the sake of the higher purpose of conforming to the church. And the reason for this is for the sake of receiving the divine power of God as a group. In reality, they are simply conforming to the group in their mind and have robbed themselves of any kind of independent thought or action in the matter based on the mystical manipulations and goals of the church, which is supposed to make them purer or closer to God and freer from the surrounding world. This is a weird place to be in when you actually believe God has shown you this. The mind manipulation is that since you are a part, since you are not the chosen leader, God has shown him or her what you need to do. Got that? Okay. So God bypassed you and show them what is the right thing to do. Isn't this the same as having a mediator between yourself and God? I mean, it actually is while you're being taught that there is no mediator between God and men. So Jesus was totally against putting men between you and God. But you're caught in this system that constantly puts men between you and God. So the idea of mystical manipulation is I sacrifice my own thoughts to be in sync with the group. And I'm deceiving myself. And, and the fear is that I could be deceiving myself since I'm not the divine appointed leader. You see how deep this rabbit hole goes? It's insane. It's insane thinking but so easy to get entangled in 
in this insidious thought process. Again, as I always encourage you on this channel, if you got out of one of these groups, good for you. You won. Keep your independent thought, stay free, and keep living your best life. Goodbye for now.